Good evening, family, and welcome to our next session of Serve of the Bible. This whole week, a song was stuck in my head and says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. And what a beautiful name it is. In His name, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that He is Christ. He is our Lord. He has washed us clean. He has saved us. Tonight, we are moving on to the next session of the Serve of the Bible. And we are talking about the places of the New Testament. The places where Jesus walked, where he met his disciples, where he did miracles. Enjoy the session. Well, welcome back to the Bible Map Room. So many memories flood my mind as I reflect on each of these pieces that I've collected from all across the world. For instance, take a look over here. I brought these back from a jungle tribe in South America. Just look at the size of this, uh, this arrow and the bow that goes with it. But you know, the Bible doesn't take place really in South America, does it? It takes place in the Holy Land. And that's what we need to get back to because in this session, we're going to focus on the places of the New Testament. What I want to do to get started is to go back to that, um, that map, a map of the entire world, so we can talk about the places of the Bible. And you remember, we talked about it in three parts on this map. This whole thing isn't in the Bible. Neither is this. Neither is this. And neither is anything from this line down here. And neither is anything way over here. God really focuses on this box right here. It's very small. And the Old Testament is on this side. The New Testament's in the middle. And uh, the New Testament has the Gospels right here. And the rest of the New Testament is a box that goes over to Italy. Old Testament, Gospels, Acts and the Epistles. Do you have it? Well, to get started, what I want to do is what we did in the Old Testament, to take a quick survey of the story of the Gospels, and I put in every single one of the key places I want you to know from the Gospels, which are only 11. This is going to be very easy. And I want to give you a very quick survey of the life of Jesus and name a few things so that you can, you can see how it's working. The New Testament opens with Joseph and Mary giving birth to Jesus Christ in Bethlehem, which is down here. And then the shepherds came and the wise men came. Joseph and Mary are up here. They, they live in Nazareth, but because of the census, they come down and have Jesus here. And then because of the threat of Herod, the family had to flee over into Egypt. And after Herod died, they came back and, they, and Jesus Christ grew up in Nazareth, where he grew up as a carpenter's son. And every year, his family celebrated the Jewish feasts and they were required to come back down to Jerusalem, which is right in here. And you remember when he was 12? He was at one of those feasts, and he astounded the religious leaders with his wisdom in the temple. And then he'd go back up, and he grew up, and he ministered in four important regions. That's all you have to learn. Region 1, Region 2, Region 3, Region 4. Region 1 is Galilee, named after the Sea of Galilee. The middle was the Samaritans, or Samaria, and the bottom part is where the capital is, and it's Judea. And he would cross at times the Jordan River and he would minister over in a place called Perea. Galilee, Samaria, Judea, Perea. Mary's close relative named Elizabeth then gave birth to John the Baptist, who had an extensive ministry along the Jordan River in Judea. And he baptized many people who listened to his message of repentance. And he even baptized Jesus around the Jordan River and announced to the public that that's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Well, before Jesus began his public ministry, he was tempted by Satan in the wilderness for 40 days, and he defeated Satan in all three temptations. After Jesus returned from that temptation, he launched his public preaching and teaching ministry right in, right in Nazareth. And he began creatively teaching with his famous parables, his stories, his 39 parables, and his miracles, which the Bible says there were so many they, they couldn't put them all in the books. 
Well, he gave 37 famous ones inside the Gospels and lots of healings. And then many times in the New Testament it says, everybody who came sick or had a problem, Jesus healed them all. We don't know how many people he healed. And in this period, he selects many of his leaders to be apostles, and he ministers extensively in Galilee. In fact, uh, his mom came to him one day and said, listen, we're at this wedding, and they're out of wine. Can you do something, son, please? And I'm sure that was an interesting moment between mom and son, and he, he did his first miracle in Cana, which is up here as well. But then he had to have a home base. He moved out of Nazareth, obviously, as an adult, and set up his headquarters in Capernaum at the top, uh, right on the coast, actually, of the Sea of Galilee. And as a good Jewish, obedient, holy person, he would come down to Jerusalem time after time, and sometimes he would go around Samaria, and sometimes he'd go right through Samaria. One of the times he went through Samaria, he met the woman at the well. And you remember the whole story of the town accepting Jesus because of what happened. Well, Jesus also crossed the Jordan River numerous times, sometimes to get away of the conflict in this area of Perea. And uh, there were many things we could list there, but one of them is when Jesus had that amazing conversation with the, or with the rich young ruler. But when you think about where did he spend most of his ministry, this is one of the two areas, and here's the other one, because here's the temple. And a lot of his friends lived down here. And Christ ministered often in Jerusalem. And he also ministered in this place called Jericho, you already learned in the Old Testament, right over here, including uh, healing blind Bartimaeus and having that uh, very unusual conversation with Zacchaeus. And the other city I want you to know is right near Jerusalem, just south. It's, uh, it's Bethany. You've probably heard of that. And he had some close friends he stayed with often. That's Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And you remember he raised Lazarus from the dead? Well, during this whole period, especially as the three years of ministry went further along, the religious leaders who all were headquartered in Jerusalem, uh, they, uh, they hated Jesus because he, he, he um, confronted their hypocrisy and many different things. And they continued their opposition and they rejected Jesus and they paid Judas 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives just just across uh, the valley from the temple. Been there many times. Eventually, Jesus was tried, beaten, crucified, and laid in a borrowed tomb. Well, as Christ prophesied here and in here numerous times, he actually said it ahead of time. He said, they're going to kill me, and after three days, I'm rising again from the dead, and that's exactly what he did. Even with the soldiers guarding him, he arose from the grave and appeared to his disciples in various places, and he showed up to over 500 people. I mean, the whole place was talking. How could anybody deny it? He did this over about 40 days. Finally, at that same place outside of the temple, the disciples watched Jesus <laughs> ascend into the clouds to heaven. I've tried to picture myself watching this. You know, Jesus is talking, <laughs> and all of a sudden he starts going up, and he promises to return to earth in the same manner, in the same place as he went up. Well, there it is. It's a short summary of the places of the gospel. Now, I want you to learn just four of the regions. I've already named them a couple times, and seven key cities, and then you'll, you'll have it. You will not have all of the locations, but you'll get the big idea. So what are the regions? What are the nations? Galilee. Samaria, Judea, and Perea. Y you know that. You got it. Galilee, Samaria. Say it with me if you want. Galilee, Samaria, Judea, Perea. Now, the next thing I want you to see is I want you to, um, to go beyond the nations and the regions of Galilee, Samaria, Judea, Perea, and move over to the cities. And we've talked about them so far. And they take place in the same area. Joseph and Mary in Nazareth come down to Bethlehem, go to Egypt. He grows up in Nazareth. He comes down at 12 to Jerusalem. He goes back and grows up as a carpenter's son. The temptation occurs, the baptism with John the Baptist down here. Sets up his new headquarters right here at Capernaum. Lots of preaching, a lot of teaching, a lot of opposition, a lot of miracles. 
comes down lots of time in Jerusalem, some interesting conversations in Jericho, and right below that is Bethany where his best friends are. And there, there it is. Let me show them on a map to you. And I'm just going to go down in this order for you because it's sometimes easier to remember. Capernaum, see, it caps, it's on the cap, it's on the top of the Sea of Galilee. C-A, C-A, Capernaum, Cana, right across the bottom. And Nazareth, a small town, is where he grew up. Then Jericho is right over the Jordan River from Moab. You learned that in the Old Testament. And then over here is Bethlehem where he was born. But the, uh, the big city down here is Jerusalem where Christ spent most of his time and then Beth in Bethany. Capernaum, Cana, Nazareth. You getting it? Jericho, Jerusalem, Bethany, and Bethlehem. See it one more time. Here we go. What caps? Capernaum, right? What's next? Cana, right here. What's next? Nazareth, where he grows up. What's over here? Jericho. What's the big capital? Jerusalem. What's directly south? Bethlehem. And what's a little bit to the, to the east? It's Bethany. Capernaum, Cana, Nazareth, Jericho, Jerusalem, Bethany, and Bethlehem. Isn't it amazing how much you're learning? Just think about this. In these two sessions, you're going to learn 48 places in the Bible. Now you can picture, for instance, when it says that um, they went down to Mount Sinai, you'll know where it is. Or Kadesh Barnea with the 12 spies. Or when you're in the Gospels and you read Jesus left Galilee and headed down to Jerusalem. Or went to visit Mary and Martha in their home in Bethany. You'll know exactly where he was going. Well, for our last segment, we're going to learn the, the 11 major new places that occur in Acts and the Epistles. That includes Acts all the way to Revelation. You see, Acts and the Epistles takes place further west than Israel. Let's return to our world map and just uh, take a look at it. The Old Testament takes place off the map this way to the east. The Gospels are right here. And then uh, Jesus wanted his disciples to take the good news everywhere. And the book of Acts and the Epistles go this way, all the way to the west. You got it? Everything in the book of Acts and the Epistles starts in Jerusalem, starts here, and then spreads up through Israel, up north, up here where Antioch is, across the Mediterranean to Asia Minor, then up to Greece and over to Rome, and then eventually goes around the world. And it gets started. How about a quick survey of the book of Acts and the epistles that contain uh, every one of those 11 places that you're going to learn? Before Jesus left for heaven, he instructed his disciples to teach all nations, beginning in Jerusalem, right here, then in Judea, you may already learned that, and then in Samaria, and then in the uttermost part of the earth. And that's exactly what happened in the book of Acts and the Epistles. The, remember Jesus said to wait in Jerusalem because you don't have the power to do what I want you to do yet? I've got to resurrect and ascend into heaven, then I'll send the Spirit down. And you remember the Spirit came on Pentecost with flames of fire where Peter preached a powerful message. And 3,000 people responded to the gospel and were baptized. Now that must have been one massive baptism. <laughs> but much to the shock of the believing Jews in Jerusalem, the gospel even spread beyond the Jews, which shocked everybody, to the half-Jews known as the Samaritans. Then in that period of Samaria, the evangelist Philip preached and performed miracles in Samaria and was even miraculously transported to witness to an Ethiopian from down here in Africa and led him to Christ. But then after the Jews and the spread to Samaria, it took off to all the rest of the world. And finally it was Paul who was on a, a, a road to Damascus, traveling to it, he experienced his miraculous Damascus road call into ministry with the light and everything. And then Paul grew spiritually and eventually God challenged him to take missionary trips and he took three of them. Number one, number two, and the longest was number three. All from Jerusalem or Antioch around, then he'd come back tell everybody what happened, talk with all the leaders, and he would go from Jerusalem to Antioch and now the regions. This is the region he went in the, in the Acts and Epistles called Galatia. And this is a key city of Ephesus. And then he would go around this landmass into Macedonia up here where he ministered to, uh, to people and he planted churches in Philippi and Thessalonica. 
And then he came down south. This part right here is called Achaia. And he ministered in two very important and powerful cities called Athens and Corinth. Athens and Corinth and Ephesus. During this period of the three missionary journeys, Paul wrote his Pauline epistles to churches. So he would start a church over here in the earlier uh, travels, and he'd find out what the problems were. He'd write a letter, and somebody would carry it around, and that's where that took place. Well, during Paul's missionary journeys, the religious leaders back down in hometown in Jerusalem, would, they were furious with him. And they'd follow him and oppose him violently, and they, they tried to kill him. They tried to murder him for preaching about Jesus. Just think about that. Finally, Paul was tried back in Jerusalem and outside of Jerusalem in Caesarea, was tried by Felix, Festus, and Agrippa, was imprisoned numerous times, and finally he was sent to Rome, way over here in Italy. And he was in Rome in prison for a while. Then they let him go, and he ministered and wrote some books, went back into the Roman prison, and he died. Well, during Paul's journeys and his imprisonment over here, and when he was free and went back, he wrote his epistles to the pastors, back to the pastors of the, same, of the churches that he had planted. And while the other apostles, they wrote some of their general epistles to individuals, like um, Hebrews and First and Second Peter and First and Second Third John and Jude. That's when those were written. Well, after Paul's death, but after Paul died, there's one more key place I want you to know, and that was the Apostle John. He was imprisoned on a little tiny rocky island where I've been over here, in the island of Patmos, where he wrote the famous book of Revelation. And he helped to spread the good news of Jesus Christ coming back the second time and establishing his eternal kingdom. So now it's time to learn the final five major nations in Acts and the Epistles and the six cities. It's very simple. You've already learned most of them in my little narrative here. Here it is. This is the nations or regions, Galatia, Macedonia, Achaia, Italy, and Patmos. Missionary Journey 1, Missionary Journey 2, Missionary Journey 3. Year and a half, two and a half, and the last Missionary Journey, four years. They come back and rest. Galatia, Macedonia, Achaia, Italy, and Patmos. Now the cities of Acts and the Epistles, and I want to show them to you just so you can see it. It's, it's really only a few. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know Rome already. You've heard of Ephesus. You know Athens. A little town very strategic in the New Testament, Corinth. And this was Damascus, and it's where Paul was converted, and this is where they, some of the missionary journeys started from. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do it in that order. Damascus, right? Antioch, Ephesus, Athens, Corinth, and Rome. And you know, the book of Ephesians is written to the church here. The book of Corinthians is written to the church here. This is to Rome, to Romans. Damascus, Antioch. You have it? Damascus, Antioch. Then Ephesus, cross the water, Athens, down this little peninsula, Corinth, back up to Rome. Do, do you have it? Hopefully it's not hard at all. Damascus, Antioch, Ephesus, and Rome. Do you have it? Damascus, Antioch, Ephesus, Athens, Corinth, and Rome. We now come to one of my favorite parts in this entire course, as you will learn the New Testament story in a way you'll never forget. We've innovated a totally new, unique approach using two very famous Jewish symbols. The first symbol will enable you to learn the story of Jesus in the Gospels, and the second symbol uh, focuses on the story of the apostles in the Acts and Epistles. You're going to learn the movements of the New Testament in each of these in three specific steps. Number one is kind of a basic level, which is what I want you to learn. And then I'm going to build on that in the advanced level. And finally, we're going to circle back called the mastery level where you'll, you'll get it. So come over here to our screen with the symbol for the Gospels. Now the question is, what would you choose as a symbol for the Gospels? We chose... The Star of David. How can you beat that? 
That represents the ministry of Jesus. Now what I want to do is build the basic level on, around that star. Something happened before the ministry of Jesus, obviously, he had to grow up. We call that the early life of Jesus with Joseph and Mary and everything that occurred. And then on the other side of the star was somebody that pointed him out, that prepared the way for him and even baptized him. Who is that? Well, that's the ministry of John the Baptist. Well, the hero of everything is the star in the middle. And that represents the ministry of, you know, Jesus. So, so far, the early life of Jesus, the ministry of John the Baptist, the ministry of Jesus. And if you remember, the life of Jesus grew in popularity and then he was rejected, opposed, and he was eventually crucified. That's the next level that occurs. And we call that the trials and the crucifixion. So it's the early life of Jesus, the ministry of John the Baptist, the ministry of Jesus, Jesus' trials and crucifixion. But as you remember, he promised, I'm not going to stay in that grave for very long. I'm going to get out. I'm going to resurrect, and I'm going to send all the way back up into heaven, and eventually I'm going to come back again the next time. So we drew kind of an unusual arrow. At the bottom of it is a round circle, which represents the stone being rolled away. And then he goes up and ascends, but he promises I'm coming back the second time. So what are we going to call that? Well, that's the resurrection, obviously and the ascension up back into heaven. Those are the five things. Those are the basic levels. Now, can we go to the advanced level? Now, but before we do, how about I just review that one more time for you, because I want to put that in your mind so you got it. You know, the arrow, the arrow, the star, the cross, and the... You got it? All right. The early life of Jesus, the ministry of John the Baptist, the ministry of Jesus, then it goes up and it goes down. You remember the cross? trials and crucifixion, he leaves, and the resurrection and ascension. Now, let's put some advanced facts just for you. Think about the Star of David with, with two triangles. There's one pointing up to heaven, and there's, a, there's another triangle pointing, coming down to earth. I want to make two observations. This Jesus is the Son of God, but he's also, if you remember reading through the Gospels, he's the Son of Man. He's both. And because he was the Son of God, he was able to do two things that nobody else could do. He fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies that were written hundreds of years before he showed up on the earth. In fact, the Old Testament has more than 300 plus prophecies of his first coming and his second coming. He's the Son of God. Who else can say, I'm going to be born at the right place at the right time and all these events are going to happen and I'm going to be born in this city and only God could do that. But not only did he fulfill prophecies, but he did miracles. My goodness. Well, how many miracles does the New Testament say he did? Do you know? The Bible says he did so many you could never fit everything Jesus said and did in the books. And he did 37 specific miracles. In fact, he raised three people from the dead. Three. The widow's son, Jairus' daughter, and the most famous is Lazarus. The Son of God did fulfill prophecies, did miracles, but as the Son of Man, he was busy ministering, serving, caring, loving, helping, weeping with people, but he focused on 12 people called his apostles. But he not only ministered, but he taught. He had a lot of things to teach and to say and to preach. We call that preaching, and Jesus used unique methodology of communication. He told so many stories. We call those parables. Do you know make parables? Like the parable of the Good Samaritan? You know how many he used? 39. Do you have it? Son of God, Son of Man, prophecies, miracles, ministering, preaching. Now you're ready for the mastery. I want you to know those five big ideas. So let's go back. What's this? That's right, the early life of Jesus. And across the bottom, you have five boxes for each of those five little uh, mini symbols. The early life of Jesus, it's got the forward arrow. What's next on the other side? That's right, the backward arrow. Ministry of John the Baptist, there it goes. What's in the middle? That's right, the Star of David, the ministry of Jesus. That's the star, forward arrow, backward arrow, star. And then the cross, the trials and the crucifixion. And then he rose again. You remember this, you got it, don't you? And that is the resurrection and ascension, the arrow of going up and coming down. Take a look at the bottom of that. Let me erase it for you. Can you remember it? <laughs> Come on, can you? There it is, there it is, there it is. What's this one? There it is. 
Let's review it. Forward arrow, backward arrow, the star of David, the cross, and the resurrection and ascension. Well, that completes then the symbol for the four Gospels. And what we're going to do next is we're going to move to the rest of the New Testament in the symbol for Acts and the Epistles. There's a little secret here in something that Jesus told the disciples to do. He said, I want you to be witnesses to me in Acts chapter 1, verse 8 in Jerusalem, then go to Judea and Samaria, and finally the end of the earth. That's the outline of what takes place in the rest of the New Testament. Now, what's the symbol that we selected? Can you guess it? We're so delighted about this. It is the menorah, famous menorah from the temple and the New Testament, and it has five parts that we're going to teach you. Part number one is the base, and it follows Christ's outline of Jerusalem first with the Jews, the birth of the church to the Jews, followed by the spread of the church to the Samaritans, followed by Paul's missionary journeys to the Gentiles. Then opposition kept following and got worse. And this is where Paul's trials and imprisonment and ultimately his death. And then the church continued to today. And the last book of the New Testament, the book of Revelation, talks about the spread of the church all the way to the end. This is, therefore, the middle flame, the global expansion to eternity. Now let's move to the advanced level and just give you some other facts that you can write in your workbook if you want. Let's review one more time. The birth of the church to the Jew, the spread of the church to the Samaritans, the missionary journey to the Gentiles, Paul's trials and imprisonment, and the global expansion to eternity. Now for some advanced. The birth of the church to the Jews has four parts to it. The Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost and they speak in tongues and they then want to know what's going on. So Peter stands up and gives a great sermon about this is a move of God and 3,000 people come to know Christ and the church continues to spread and it breaks out of Jerusalem and Judea and moves north to Samaria. And there's two big uh, people that I want you to know here. The primary one is Philip, who was the evangelist to the Samaritans and led the Ethiopian person to the Lord and the apostle Paul, who was converted at this particular time and was told by Jesus to take this to the Gentiles. And he does. Missionary journeys to the Gentiles, and there's three of them. First missionary journey, second missionary journey, the third missionary journey. And as a result of the growth of the church, all of the enemies of the gospel kept following Paul until you have Paul's trials and imprisonment with his trials in Jerusalem and Judea. And he's eventually sent over to Rome, where he was thrown into prison for the first Roman imprisonment and the second Roman imprisonment. And the last part is the middle part. That is a global expansion to eternity and has three little parts to it. First of all, as this grew further and further, there was more and more persecution. And then there was false teachers that came in and taught heresy. Many books of the New Testament were written to solve that problem. And the ongoing church planting. All right, let's move on to our mastery level. This is not very difficult to put together, those five parts to it. The birth of the church to the Jews. The second is the spread of the church to Samaritans. You got it? This one over here. Paul's missionary journeys to the Gentiles. Then his Paul's trials and imprisonment. And finally, the global expansion to eternity. Let's see if we can't review that one more time. Can you think ahead of time with me? There we go. Well, now let's take a look at the Star of David and the menorah. Never forget then the rest of the New Testament as you remember those symbols that take you from the Gospels and Acts and the Epistles.